Welcome back, everybody, to the card chatter with Refractor Jones and Bobbles and Ball Cards. Hope everybody has had a great week out there. This is our Wednesday, Wednesday episode. I cannot talk. Uh, this would be episode number 26. Man, uh, getting tongue tied, but um, hope everybody is doing well. Hope your week's going along great. Uh, Congratulations to the New York Yankees for advancing on. Uh, as we are currently recording this, the Padres and um, Phillies are in a battle. 0-0 zero, zero is actually – oh, nope, I lied. Uh, Phillies just scored. one nothing. Uh, looks like Harper hit a home run. Man, that's tough to say. Uh, Harper hit a home run in the playoffs. <laughs> you know, this is the first year. Many folks, is he's got multiple MVPs and everything. But this is the first year the man's ever advanced in the playoffs at all. Um, but anyway, congrats to him. You know, I, I didn't care for his ego when he was in Washington, but that's neither here nor there. Um, like to give a shout out to Mason and Team Mason for Mason's mission, as we always like to start the episodes. Uh, big shout out to him. I'm seeing his post of how he's, you know, working hard, standing up, you know, getting stronger every day. Keep grinding, Mason. Keep doing your thing. Um, also, seeing he got his cards back, that was an awesome story about the uh, Spectra Aaron Judge autograph. Um, you know, showing showing the photo of when he pulled it and that excitement, and then obviously we were able to be a small piece of that, getting that card. Uh, graded for him and back in his possession so as always we'll put up the uh, qr code for mason's mission mason is a, a strong young man trying to work to help other uh, youth who struggle with pediatric cancer and their families so big 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 shout out as always to mr mason so how's your week going along refractor i know uh, we're both Good. suffering from losses on Sunday, uh, we got the NBA season kicking off tonight. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I used to be excited, but I'm more excited about hockey. I mean, it's weird timing for me. Um, <laughs> it, it is. It, it's like very weird. If you ask me four years ago, this time of year right now, what I would be more excited about, it would be basketball. Um but honestly, I am more interested in watching hockey. I I don't I couldn't even tell you who's playing tonight. So um, I don't know. I just I don't really care for the game that much anymore in basketball. So um, and maybe that's why I did what I did this evening that we were discussing before uh, hitting record. Um, for all the listeners out there, uh, just a topic we want to touch on real quick. Um, you know, there's a lot of change. There's a lot of talks and all that. And we're not going to get into all of the talking and all that stuff. But there, there's a lot of change in the hobby space right now. And I've always been someone that really loves opening wax. I am blessed to have a wife that loves opening wax. And there was something that hit me today just that really made me sad. Um I went to Walmart. I was looking to see if they had any of the sweet tea that me and the missus enjoys. It's been out for a while, kind of like, you know, sports cards. The shelves are bare. We can't get our sweet tea. So I went over there to check on that. And while I did, I swung through the little section, which I don't know how everybody else's Walmarts are set up right now. Mine just has one little section at, on a checkout aisle that they, they're putting cards at now. It's not over near the self-checkouts or anything, it's like where the candy would usually be. There's one aisle, one checkout aisle that has, you know, a little bit of cards there. But today I was highly surprised. Um, me and my son was over there on, on Friday, this past Friday, and there was a lot of, you know, uh, cleanup. Like they, they had organized the shelves real well. So I don't know if they stocked that day or if I just happened to catch the stock today, but the shelves were loaded with Prism Basketball, and I'm talking mega boxes. There was cello packs. There was hanger packs. 
there was Optic Basketball Blasters. There was Metal Universe Champion Blasters. There was Topps Chrome Blasters and Mega Boxes. I mean, the shelves were stocked. And I asked one of the nice ladies that was at a register. She didn't have a line. I asked her if she could price check a few products for me because they didn't have the correct prices on them. And when she told me the prices, it was very, very, very disheartening because, and I get, you know, things have to go up in price. I'm not complaining about that, but I feel like we're paying the premium from the, the wax flipping that was going on. And I wouldn't pay price on the aftermarket when people would go clear the shelves and then sell it on eBay or Facebook or whatever. And it's made it very difficult for me to pay even the shelf price now. Um, I do notice that even when people are selling it on eBay, there's not much margin there. In fact, people might be losing money uh, after eBay fees and stuff. But it just like it sucks and sours the fun out of like to buy a hanger pack, which I think had maybe 20 cards in it was twenty two dollars. Um, blasters of optic were thirty five. But the one that really crushed me was the Topps Chrome Baseball Mega Boxes. I really love the X Fractors, but sixty five dollars for a mega box are you crazy tops like i told some people in a in a chat earlier this evening i was like we're we, we keep hearing that fanatics is going to clear stuff up right but i'm actually looking at things and i have to give props to panini a little bit because even their prices have increased less than what tops prices have increased is this a product of fanatics? I mean, I'm concerned now. Well, it's definitely the signs to come. I mean, because you know, when it's a monopoly, they they have no competition and and they they have no incentive to to bring the product out at a at a reasonable price. All we're doing is paying the juice now. You know, if you go pick up anything at Walmart, and that's what I was telling you. It's it's stupid. It, it's just crazy. And and you were, it's funny, I didn't know that you were at Walmart, but that's when I told you, I said, hey, I'm going grocery shopping and, and I'll be back in a little bit. So then that's exactly where I went. I went grocery shopping, but I do it on purpose to go there just so I can look to see what, what kind of wax is there. And, yeah. and for us, it sits in, in the electronics department. But what's funny is, is that I can see all the MJ holding boxes sitting on the pallet racking. And, you know, they're sitting up by where all the TVs are all stacked up. And I, and, and I did the same thing. I talked to, you know, one of the girls there and, and I said, what is all that? She goes, that's all sports carts. And I said, all of that sports carts? She goes, yep. She goes, we only bring down a little bit every week. We bring, we bring down two boxes a week and, and then we restock it. I said, you restock it? She goes, yeah, we don't even get somebody to come in any longer. She goes, we, we're doing it. And see, I'm wondering if, like, what had been going on. Because to be fully transparent, I got really excited when I seen it today. Because my area, like, there was stuff being stocked. But I was starting to actually get worried that, we'll call it the good stuff, was going out the back door or, like, private deals being made with whoever was coming to stock or whatever. Because mm -hmm. I hadn't seen Prism. I hadn't seen, you know, the stuff that I would be really, really interested in. And then... The sticker shock hit me like even when it went on the shelf, I then I, I'm telling you, I was sad. I walked away from all of it. I didn't buy a single thing today, um, but I do have, you know, speaking on the prices. So it just for listeners out there, if you're not aware, um, the cello packs, they used to be twelve dollars. So actually, they, they used to be nine ninety nine <laughs> when they first started. Well, I. I know in 2018, so we're going to go just just pre-pandemic and into pandemic mode. Okay. Because that, that's that's the shift of when the, the wax flipping started. So I'm just kind of going right before the flippers, you know, and, mm -hmm. and what they were even buying it at. So uh, cellos were 12 bucks. Those are now $16. So those increased by 4 bucks. Um. The hanger, and I'm calling them hanger packs because that's what they are now. 
very weird. They used to be in boxes with cellophane wrapping. Those are now in just packs of, I believe it's 20 cards, just like a, a fat pack, which is yeah. very weird to me. Um, but anyway, those used to be $18. They were $17.98. They're now $22. Uh, optic blasters were $35. We all know blasters used to be 20 bucks. Yep. Um, I think the metal universe blasters were mispriced. They rang up as NFL cards, which was very weird because upper deck has nothing even related to NFL. But when the lady rang them up, they rang up as NFL cards and they rang up as $49.88. So I don't know if somebody slapped some different UPC stickers on those boxes or what happened there, but they rang up very weird. Um, the mega boxes, I'm fairly certain Prism Megas used to be 45 and those are now yeah. 55 And then... 44.99. Tops Chrome Megas used to be, I know Bowman Megas used to be $15. Chrome Megas, I think, used to be $19.99 or maybe $29.99. Uh, the, the Megas were $29.99. Well, those are now $65. <laughs> it's crazy. See, I, I didn't even look at the prices. I saw it all there. I mean, there was a ton of it you know, out there, and it's there. Every time I go now... I, I specifically go to Walmart only just to, so I can go take a peek to see what's sitting on the shelf to see if it's still, you know, being thrown out there and, and people are buying it or not. And, and my, my Walmart is still limiting people. They're, they're limiting them two items per, you know, per transaction. And, and I said, are you guys, I said, are you guys really going to still continue this? She goes, yeah. She goes, what, what two would you like? I said, no, I actually don't want any mama. I said, I, I was just looking at them, uh, I, but it's nuts. My Walmart has never limited people, but the Target does. And they used to have signs up. There's no longer signs up. Mm. And at one point it used to say Pokemon they were limiting. But now the signs are gone. But I do know um, when the Pokemon Go came out, I had like a couple of the, I think it was like two ETBs of those, the Elite Trainer boxes. And then I had like three blasters of some sport product. And they wouldn't let me like check out because I had, I think it was four. It's either, it's either four or five. And I had just over the amount that it would let you scan at the, you know, at the register. And uh -huh. the girl was like, it's okay. You can check out as much as you want. You just have to, you know, scan it. And then check out and scan more and check out. They didn't care. Like the machine would limit you, but they didn't care. She's like, oh, yeah. you know, just scan it, check out, whatever, go about your day. Yeah, uh, my wallet never limited though. Yeah, my Wally world is is uh, a little stringent then because they they only allow you to take two items, and that's regardless whether you choose like a pack or if you choose a box. So you can grab a pack and then a box, and that's your two items. Or you can grab two boxes, you know, whatever. Whatever equals to two, that's it. That's all you're allowed to get. So, I mean, seeing all of this now, and again, I it was very sad. I love opening wax, but when you talk about, it, it honestly, it makes me kick myself in the butt more that I didn't order the Topps Chrome Logo Fractor Edition when it was on Topps website. Because those were $50, which I thought, oh, well, you know, this sucks. You know, I was thinking, because I, I knew I had the mega box price in mind. And that's mm -hmm. what I was hoping to be able to get because I love the X Fractors. Um, now I'm kicking myself because $50 on a logo fractor box seems like a bargain when the megas are $65. So, yeah. Um, and that, I don't know. And you, it, you just, know, I think I think that's what Fanatics is going to end up doing to everybody too. You know, you can buy it, you can buy it direct from them cheaper, but then when you go buy it at Target, Walmart, or whatever, you're going to have to pay an extra an extra juice tax on top of it. It's just making it difficult. I mean, mm -hmm. I love opening wax, but like a conversation I had with the missus because she was sad too, you know, and she was kind of like joking with me. You know, telling me you better bring something back home. And it was difficult for me to walk away. But, but when I look at the price of that, 
you know, I was like kind of tallying quick math in my head. And I was like, you know, let's say I bought three megas. That's 200 bucks, you know, with after I pay tax and everything, I'm spending over $200. But yet I gripe at $200 for a hobby box. So I would kind of be contradicting myself if I'm okaying spending 65 each on Megas if I'm not willing to spend 200 on Hobby. And so, you know, or, or like looking at the, the cellos, you know, um, or, or the hanger thing, you know, hanger packs and looking at those and thinking, OK, this is one little, you know, we, we've talked about this before in previous episodes where like when you buy product to have fun opening, you buy one pack and you open it and you look at the cards and then you're done. Right. Yep. yep. Even though they might be even though it might be one pack with 20 cards versus five pack with four cards each, the five packs feels funner because there's five different t chances of opening, right? It's, sure. it's a mental thing. Yeah, it um, is. It, it's the same reason if you go to, and, and I know that they're always better to buy, but if you go to the store to buy flagship, Topps flagship, you know that the inserts and parallels and all that short prints, your odds are better off hitting them in a hanger box. But there's only that one cellophane wrapped pack in that hanger box versus if you buy the blaster and it's got like eight packs or whatever in it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, th there's variables there and maybe that's why they do it because they know mentally people are thinking more packs, more chances, et cetera. So, mm -hmm. um, but I, I don't know. I'm wondering if this isn't part of the, uh, I, I don't even know the word to use, but part of some of the problem within the hobby right now, because. No, it's the collector's fault. This is all, this is all our fault. <laughs> well, I can assure you as someone who loves to collect, but I also love ripping wax and everything else. The sentiment that we we went over in the last episode when we were discussing this is that collectors were being blamed for paying the price. The reason yeah. I'm having trouble buying wax now is because I wasn't paying inflated prices before, and I don't want to pay it now. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, the know. only the only thing that happened now is that now we flippers and even collectors, everyone has now given the right to the manufacturer to add that extra tax on top of us that's all we did you know so i'm not saying it was it was just flippers and and but of course if there weren't flippers out there there would there would be product on on the shelves and there would be clearance stickers like i saw some clearance stickers on on some product again um, i so, told them i told them this is the same thing i said my hope and pray is that those yellow cardboard boxes start making their way back out to the shelf and getting loaded up with all of that prism product and optic product and everything yep. else that like it used to top chrome would be loaded up in there. Um, you know, yeah. guaranteed. Uh, it will. That's what I'm hoping happens again. Cause yeah. that was, that was really fun time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's, it's definitely going to happen again. There, there's no mm -hmm. if, ands, buts about that. I mean, allocations well, are allocations already been done, you, you know, as far as, their printing and 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 everything else so you know that a ton of this stuff was printed and oh, and it was printed yeah. it was printed on the allocation of sell through what it sold through before you know the last year well it sure as hell was not going to sell through you know the way it did last year or even the, you know the year before so it it's going to sit and it's going to go to clearance there is going to be a ton of it on the shelves and you know being sold off as clearance you just yeah, have to wait. I, you know, I, I've, I've talked about it over on the other channel. Um, this is Chantilly Week. We can float this into uh, the other topic that we wanted to touch on. Big um, week for you guys. Yeah. I mean, I, I love going to the Chantilly show. Always, you know, even if I just go up for one day, it's mm -hmm. always a great show to attend. Uh, but furthermore, you know, James comes down and hangs out. Uh, this this time, Natsman is supposed to come up. I haven't gotten to ever meet Natsman. I'm hoping he gets to make the trip. Oh, that's uh, Scott's cool. supposed to come up. Um, I talked to Flipping Steve. I believe he's supposed to come. 
Sunday. And my son, the past few times the shows came around, has asked about going on Sundays. So it's actually, you know, I get excited about that because he doesn't take much interest in cards or whatever. Well, but he does cool. do like Magic the Gathering and that kind of stuff. And so there are some non-sports cards up there. But he also likes just, it, it's he likes going around looking at everything. Even though he doesn't really get into collecting sports cards, he enjoys going up there and looking at stuff. So, um, you know, it's like my my one time every, my one day every time the Chantilly show comes around. Um I can kind of do that with him because, <laughs> you know, otherwise he, he doesn't mind going to shows. It's just, it, it, he doesn't have a heavy interest in sports cards. So when right. he's asked to go up there, I'm never going to say, nah, we're not going, you know, if that's sure. an opportunity I can take advantage of and, you know, actually get to, to spend the time with him and doing it, then uh, it makes it that much better. So um I'll, I'll likely, I don't know when James will be down, but we may wind up going Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I don't know yet, uh, but I do know I'll be there Saturday and Sunday. Uh, but anyway, touching on that and then, you know, coming out of the the wax thing, that was part of my other thought today. It was like, you know, I could sit here and I, I could buy how many of her blasters and cellos and all this, right? And I could take it home and I could rip it. And then it's all a lottery and what, whatever, you know, how hot the Mrs. Hands is this evening and whether or not we get a decent hit. <laughs> but then I was looking up like the best hits, even in some of those products. And then I had to look at not just the odds of pulling that hit, because, you know, you never know what that's going to be. That's just giving you an idea of sorts, but outweighing like, even if we did hit, the good hit out of the product was it even going to give us the value back of what I was going to be spending on it. And then to top that off, I see so much Panini product with such crap quality. You take a gamble right there. Like that's one of the biggest gambles, maybe even bigger than hitting the nice hit is whether or not it's going to be in good shape because nobody's going to pay you, you know, if I decided to sell it. And again, to clarify, NBA basketball, I just stated earlier in this episode, I'm not excited about it. So if I hit a Cade Cunningham or something like that, it wasn't going to be something special to stick in my PC. So it was going to be buying based off of having fun of ripping product. And then if I hit something, likely selling it, you know, whether I graded it or whatever first. Baseball would have been different because there are players in baseball I would have kept and I like the X Fractors. But if I had bought the Prism or whatever, that would have solely been hunting for the hits, right? Mm -hmm. So all of that was flowing through my mind. And then to top it off, you know, if I had, like I said, if I spent money, then that would have been coming out of maybe what I could use up in Chantilly. Right. And knowing that that was coming up, I would rather say, let me go look through some boxes and see if there's cards I actually want. Mm -hmm. Then buying these packs and possibly hitting nothing that I would even be interested in. Yeah. Yeah. So, the all important value boxes, right? Right. And getting you your know, getting your value. Where we are, yes. And I want to challenge myself this time because I don't do this often. Um when I go, we we we've talked about this uh when i go to a show i get more in the mindset of buying what i want like i i look for cards i like cards i want i'm there as an opera you know at an opportunity to pick up things i see stuff i like and i buy it and really i know there's opportunity there to maybe dig a little bit mm -hmm. and find value and stuff like people yeah. talk about flipping and you know or being a dealer or whatever well i know how to spot things and i know how to look at players you know I, i've challenged myself with this i've done it well in hockey uh, i know in baseball i can spot guys that have potential but it's tough for me to get in that zone sometimes to say okay i want to buy this with the intent to sell Right. Um, it's hard 
to get in that mental space when I'm at a show. Many people, that's the only reason they go to a show for. Yeah. Me, I'm the opposite. I don't get in that mental space. I get in the space. Oh, my God, I like this. <laughs> so I'm going to try to I'm not going to go just solely hunting for stuff to flip. But I do want to maybe put a little challenge out there. I don't know. I want to have fun with it, like challenge myself maybe to look for, I don't know, a couple cards or something like that with the sole intent of reselling them to make a little bit of money off of. Mm -hmm. um, I think that I could have fun with that. Uh, goes into talking about the topic we are. Uh, how do you how do you spot value at a show? Um, maybe do it as a little a, a little game, a little challenge, or whatever. And see what I can do. Um, maybe even share it with others and show. You know, there's so many people talking about there's no opportunities out there right now. Maybe if I do this and like highlighted or documented or something like that. Uh, it can it can help show people there's still plenty of fun to be had out there. And I'm not talking about trying to make a million dollars at a card show. I'm talking maybe pick up a couple cards to make a hundred dollars. I don't know. We'll have some fun with it. Um, but I don't have any. I kind of, you know, I don't know if you watched it. I, I talked about is 2022 really been that bad. Um, mm -hmm. I had to, to sit back and look. And I was like, man, I've bought a lot of cool stuff this year. Like, I didn't even show everything I because I didn't want to make the video too long. But I have. 2022 has been an awesome year for me in this hobby. Mm -hmm. I mean, I bought a freaking Babe Ruth. I bought a Lou Gehrig. I bought a Jackie Robinson autograph. I mean, I have nothing to complain about in this hobby. Like, mm -hmm. Man, how about it, how about your feelings? It, you know me. You, you know how I always approach the show. You know which is the national. I mean, I go to other shows and I'll I'll do certain. You know the whole circuit tour, but for me, the the national is where I'm gonna vest. You know, put money out there. So this year, I, I was supposed to take five grand, throw it to grading, which I didn't do. So I took that and said, okay, I'm going to roll that into refractors. And then I, I said, okay, I'm going to have another 2,500 bucks. So usually I'd, I'll take 10 grand with me to, to the national and that's what I'll play with. And, and I not always spend that. So, I, I mean, there's a lot of nationals I've, I've come out and I've only spent, you know, a thousand, 1500 bucks because, you know, stuff wasn't there. It's just, you know, it, it happens. But um, for me, when when I show up at the national and and I'm buying in volume, which I try to buy volume at every show, so that's why I always try to make sure that my contacts all know that I'm coming and and they can have stuff ready to go for me. But for the national, I say, okay, I've got X amount of dollars. They're going to refractors no matter what. And then once I peek out at that number and say, okay, well I'm I'm tapped out at that number, then I I go into the reserve fund. And, and I say, okay, well, I was slated 5,000 for grading here. And unfortunately, I didn't grade because of the whole PSA fiasco with, with them charging extra and all the extra juice. And I said, well, forget it. I'm not giving you anything. So I just took some of that money and, and rolled it in and started buying other stuff, which I always do. And, and this is what you were just alluding to, you know, I'll, I'll pick up first day productions. I'll pick up other parallels, other inserts. You know, I, I won't just do specifically just refractors. I could flip, but I, I don't, I just hoard, you know, I, I buy, <laughs> I buy it all up and then I keep it, you know? So for me, it's just as bad as me buying a refractor versus buying other stuff. But I always see value in, in boxes and value boxes i would much rather take that 200 dollars that you were just talking about and go dig in a value box because i, I know i'm going to turn if i really 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 needed to sell i could take that 200 that i spent and turn it into a thousand regardless no matter what guaranteed because right, i could find right. i could find value there's, yeah, a, there's a it's out there i, I never like put i, I don't think i, I I don't remember ever publicly stating how much money I took to the national because it, it didn't 
like it didn't matter i didn't want it to be about that mm -hmm. um but we can throw we can throw it out there because it doesn't matter. It's not a secret. Um, I took five thousand cash with me. Okay. But my goal for the national was I didn't want to spend it all, mm -hmm. and I also took some cards. You know, um, y'all seen the amount of cards? I think I had like maybe fifteen cards with me, fifteen twenty cards maybe, and I didn't even sell everything. Um, I didn't. You know, with with the internet situation and stuff, it was hard to deal with people. Uh, on selling stuff. So um, I moved a couple things. But what I did then is I used that also to supplement or trade or whatever on some of the pickups I got. So um, mm -hmm. anyway, I successfully completed my mission of the national and going into it, you know, I, I was familiar with card shows. So I wasn't like a card show rookie. But at the same time, I didn't know exactly what I was walking into with the national because right. I had never been to one that big. Mm -hmm. The crazy thing was, though, and I told you guys there, like when we were there, I don't know if it's because it was in Jersey and more of the East Coast guys were there or what. I knew a ton of the dealers already at the national because they go to Chantilly. So yep. it was like I was actually comfortable you know, with making deals and, and approaching the show um, because Chantilly's not a massive show, but it's not small either. And, um, you know, I picked up a couple nice cards and then I found value boxes. And that's where I had a massive blast, you know, added all the Griffies to my collection Um I was picking up some 90s inserts, Metal Universe inserts, uh, finding uh, EX credentials, finding mm -hmm. rubies, you know, like you mentioned, first day productions. You've seen some of the Griffey refractors. Yeah. <laughs> you were kicking me on. The Barry Bonds refractors. Uh, yeah. That kind of stuff, like, you have to hunt for it. You have to put a little bit, you know, it's not going to be sitting in a display case. No. Um, there was I'm some... Not... It, and again, you know, what's funny is I'm sorry, I'm interrupting you, but that goes exactly right into what you're saying, paying the markup. I don't want to pay the markup in that showcase. Let me go dig in that box. I'll work for my money and I'll get, I'll get my juice. Right. Well, there was, there was one dealer there. Um, he was kind of, he was on the side where all of the, uh, the TriStar stuff was, he wasn't quite that far over. But he was the he had a huge space and he had like full display cases of a single player, you know, and he had a lot of nice. They weren't expensive cards in his display case. So you could tell he knew like he knew his audience, but he had some nice stuff. And I bought probably 12 Griffies from him that were in a display case, but they were priced really well. And he also a key to finding value at a show don't especially in value boxes as you said you buy in volume when you're buying a volume you're filling up like 5000 count boxes and getting yeah. at a dime a piece on estimated number in the box or whatever sure on another scale of that though you can dive through a vendor's like value box. And when I say value box, it might be cards in there that are $5, $8, $15, whatever. You're going to find some good stuff in some of these quote unquote air quotes value boxes. One thing though, is kind of like if you can, this is a little strategy I found doing this. See if other people are looking through those boxes. Like while you're looking through boxes, Keep eyes on it if other people are coming up and looking through them and buying buying anything out of them. You can gauge how the dealer is on discounting because those sticker prices are usually just a starting point. Always. Yeah, just something to throw a number on it for them to start out at. Many times the sticker price is actually going to be more than you could go on eBay and buy the card for. Sometimes dealers might have them cheaper because they don't sit there and price out everything every single show, and you can find some hidden gems in there. But one thing's for certain, if you pay attention and listen to other people, like if they come up and buy 10 cards and the dealer you know, gives them a good price on it, 
you know that dealer's willing to give a discount on volume. So if there's like if the boxes have a lot of stuff that you're intrigued in, what I did is I would start making stacks. You know, I'd pull stuff out I liked and I'd make a stack and then I'd ask, you know, I'd stop and I'd ask the dealer, hey, can you give me a total on this? You know, I, I would count up so I had an idea of how much was there. And then I'd ask them to, to look at it and give me a total. And normally, because I had a stack, they would knock a good bit off. I had one dealer. Um, I don't know if he listens to the podcast, but I was sitting there for a long time on Friday, the day my feet was killing me. Um, and I needed to just take a load off my feet. I sat at Value Boxes most all that day. But Dave, uh, Dave's midlife card crisis, I sat with him for a while at one dealer's Value Boxes. And I think that guy gave me like probably $120 to $150 off the sticker price just because of the stuff I was buying from him. Um, so that, that's another way, you know, try to gauge. It. Does the dealer give you, uh, you know, a more you buy, better price scenario? Many of them do. There are some that won't, but many of them do. And what you can find out then is a lot of times – you're getting free cards. I mean, if the sticker prices are close to eBay prices or, you know, if we want to call them comps, comps, and then they're also giving you a discount because you're buying volume, you're basically earning free money because they're giving you cards free. Let's say you have $100 in your pile and he gives it to you for 75 and then you get home and you start looking at the prices of the cards and they're all reasonably close to eBay, you just got $25 worth of free cards. I mean, it's a great way to, and that's why I wanted, you know, I said I might challenge myself. Maybe I'll look for some stuff that I find value in and uh, you go to a dealer and say, okay, I want this stuff from my collection, this stuff I'm going to use to flip it, right? And then I potentially could be adding cards to my collection absolutely free you know so it's something i might try um i don't have a lot of targets uh, again I've, I've picked up a lot of cool stuff in 2022 so uh, i don't have anything on my my battleship radar that i'm trying to take down at this show uh i'm going more to just have fun and um i do have some checklists i'm going to take with me if i catch anything uh on those checklists that are there but uh i don't really have anything big so to speak i always say that and i wind up finding something but um i don't i'm not going with the intent of buying anything big how about that so let me let me, let me ask you this what did you spend at the national then if you took five thousand uh, i came home with don't quote me 100%, but it was 1730, I think. Now that, again, I did sell some cards to put that towards stuff I bought too. But I started with 5,000 and some cards. And I came home with over 1700. So for whatever. And, and you were, and you were happy. Well, I mean, that in, that includes buying a damn Gowdy Lou Gehrig and a Larry Doby rookie and a Jim Brown autograph. I mean, and all of my Griffies. And yeah, of course I was happy. <laughs> I mean, who wouldn't be? <laughs> yeah. That's, but that's what I mean. You know, you can, you can do some amazing things and not have, you know, spent a lot of money. Yeah, exactly. And to be honest, like many times when I do my Chantilly recap videos, for full transparency to folks out there, if you've never caught or don't, you know, don't know who I am, you've never watched like my recap videos of Chantilly, most of the time, the things I get at Chantilly, I did not buy with cash out of pocket. I usually have some cards I take with me. Uh, stuff that I've like accumulated. Like right now, I haven't been listing a lot of graded cards on eBay. I have stacks of stuff that I where I've been trimming down the fat. I may take some of that stuff with me. Um, and then what I normally try to do, if possible, now things might be different right now. It might not work this show. I don't know. 
but I usually try to move out of cardboard into other cardboard that I want. Um, that's the day I bought the Fleer Jordan and the Kareem rookie. That was purchased with selling cards that day. So, um, you know, that, that, you know, that's how I know, try to do it. <laughs> Yeah, for you, you know what I what I try to do. I'll try I'll, I'll try to explain how I I play my play every time I I go to a show, whether it's the national or, or anything else. If if people don't, you know, if I've never met them and, and this dealer that I'm attacking his value boxes, because I always go introduce myself, show my Instagram page, show them that one I'm not trying to make money off of his off of his stuff. And that's kind of, that's kind of an important thing to to a lot of guys. Even though they're there to sell, you know, it, it, it kind of puts them at ease when when they look at you and they go, "Okay, look, this guy, he's not trying to make a buck off off of my stuff. He's not he's not here to beat me. This guy's a, a collector. He he loves cards. So let let me see what I can do with him. So you know, after I get break the ice and everything with with somebody that I've never met or actually dealt with. I, you know, I let them know. I say, hey, look, I'm going to buy in volume, but I need you to be able to work with me if you're able to. If you're able to do it, fantastic. If you're not, I also under, you know, we all have lines that that, that we're at and, and we, you know, either we paid at a certain amount or we want to move stuff at a certain amount. So, you know, 99% of the, the time, I, I probably skipped maybe three tables that had value boxes at the national. They just did not want to work with me at all. And, and I just moved on. And, but the ones that did want to work with me, you know, they were equally rewarded just as I was because they don't want to take that stuff home. Right. You know, they they have no interest. They have no interest of lugging all that stuff. They want to sell it. And they I want don't to push know it. if, I don't so, know if the opportunity is there now um, with the way everything has happened over the past couple of years, but that's a perfect example of when I bought all those boxes that were marked 50 cents a card and I went through it and there was a lot of awesome cards in there. And I just, I, I seen so much. I was like, okay, I could stand here and make stacks and stacks and stacks of cards, but I'm going to waste a lot of time doing this and who knows, right? So I asked the dealer how much he would take for all of his, all of his 50 cent boxes. And that was exactly what he said. Mm -hmm. He's like, let's get to a number because I don't want to load this stuff back up. And he had 23 yeah. of those boxes. He sold yeah. them all to me. None of them. What's that? None of them want to take it home. They, they never do. Right. Well, because – they have to usually guys like that that are working in volume value boxes like that. They have more than what they even have at the show. So, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know they just want to get rid of it. Like if you yeah, offer like them Dale, Dale's goal. What's that? Dale's goal. You know, you you know my buddy yeah. Dale. So his goal is every time he shows up is to sell down to maybe one to two, maybe three 3,200 count boxes. And he'll bring 50 plus boxes every time. Yeah, and he I pushes mean, it, you know, he makes sure. those deals and he sells that volume. Well, let's be honest. Those boxes aren't light. And they no. have to load them into their vehicle. They have to get them to the show. They have to unload them. They have to set the tables up. And then if they don't sell them, they have to repeat the process in reverse. And that doesn't pay. Yeah. Like, that just wears your back out. So, you know, taking a discount and selling it in volume, but leaving cash weighs a lot less than a box of cards. I mean, if folks didn't know that, cash yeah. weighs an awful lot mm -hmm. less than a box of cardboard. So they'll, but again, they'll, gladly, they'll gladly put that in their pocket and haul that out. But they don't want to haul them boxes back out. So no. if you give a and, deal, and that's and that's that's why the value boxes are so important. It's such an important play, mm -hmm. and it's often overlooked by people. You know, people may laugh and scoff at you know at the whole process, 
but there's a ton of money to be made in value boxes if if you really just dedicate yourself to it go and get your stuff that you want start picking up other stuff because if you're already buying it in volume you're buying it at such a heavy discount like you said you know for every every 10 refractors that i was buying i got 20 for free right I mean, come on I, well, I mean, how can you not do something like that? And it also, they benefit everybody. Because think about this, right? Right now, we, we there's there's no secret. The talk is out there. Dealers are struggling to sell cards because they're either underwater on them or the economy sucks and people don't want to spend the money or they're afraid because cards are going down so they don't want to buy them because they're worried that they're going to go down, right? A value box is not going to have massively high-end priced cards in it, but there's going to be opportunities there. And so, yeah, twenty dollars, twenty dollar bills all over the place, all over. Exactly. The place. And you know, you have to think if a dealer like I, I found out this evening, just for a single eight foot table at Chantilly, is three hundred and fifty bucks for one single Ooh. eight foot table along the wall. Along the the center block walls, is three hundred and fifty dollars. That's a lot to make up, you know, yep. in, in three days. Plus, knowing that you're profiting on a card, all right, you have to essentially every day make a hundred dollars profit. Now, that doesn't sound like a lot, but there's some dealers that go there and may not sell anything. But if you can sell boxes of 10 cent cards and say somebody buys a thousand of them then what did you just make you made a hundred dollars plus you're not taking those cards back home and you're not you don't care necessarily about those 10 cent cards as much as you do trying to sell that thousand dollar card you know and, and haggle with comps or whatever so that's something you have to think about too a lot of them guys they're bread and butter. They they're making more money on them value boxes. Those value boxes are more important to them than really those cards in their display cases. Yeah, it, it was funny because I was talking to Dale. And Dale you, used to tell me he, he'd say, "Yeah, I used to sell, you know, a lot of premium stuff, but I switched my game plan." And he says, "And this is all I do now is do straight value boxes because I triple the amount of money that that mm -hmm. I make." Than, than what I used to make, and, and and plus I don't have to haul the same stuff to the every single show. It's always new, brand new product because people are ripping stuff like crazy, and then they're dumping it like crazy. He goes, so I I buy it all day long, and and he says, and I set set up at at shows, and I sell eighty to ninety percent of the value box worth worth of stuff at every show, and I come out making more money than I did, you know, before. And, and right, it's, right, it's smart. Well, and, and there's less risk involved in it. You know, how much lower can a 10 cent card go? If people, <laughs> right. people can pull a dollar bill out and, you know, buy 10 cent cards. It's hard to pull a thousand dollars out and, and always drop a thousand on a card. Right. Um, I actually know a guy from the area um, for the longest time. I never seen him with display cases at card shows. Never. Only thing I seen him was tables and tables and tables of just white boxes that were 10 cent cards. He would fill up an entire van and come and just load tables with those boxes, 10 cents a piece. And he told me he would make thousands of dollars at shows. And then I seen him one time where he had set up with display cases and I was like, holy crap, Ted. You have all this stuff because I would have never dreamed he had all of these massive cards because all he ever sold was these 10 cent cards. And I was like, mm -hmm. wow. I mean, mm -hmm. he had a, a triple cut that I would just, it was so amazing. It was Onus Wagner, Ty Cobb, and Babe Ruth, triple cut auto. Wow. I mean, stuff like that was in his display cases. Um, so it was very impressive. You, you know, you think it's silly, all that work involved in selling sense. It, it's the same same switch sort of um, uh, different extremes, but it's just like the way I switched on 
what I'm selling on eBay. You know, I'm mainly in that two to twenty dollar range now. I know people mm-hmm. can afford the two dollars to twenty dollars. When when the market or card prices are going down, they're going to be less worried about spending twelve dollars on a card and whether or not it's going to drop than they are a hundred and twenty or twelve hundred dollars on a card yeah. that they know might wind up being at six hundred dollars. You know, yep. so it's much easier to move that stuff now. Does it take a little more effort? Sure. But if everything was just easy, then I don't know. You know, you really got to factor the entertainment value that you get out of it just as well, because it's, it's great because you not only process what you're pulling for yourself, but, but then you're also thinking about, you know, your buddies. And then you're also thinking about what you can flip on the side. And then, you know, then you go, hey, well, I never knew that this was there. I never saw this, you know, this this type of, of a card. And That's I don't remember this coming happening. out. And then, <laughs> right. So it's, yep. it, or, the value boxes are the are 100% the best play when you go to a show to get value. You know, I it, someone can sell you a $500 card for a hundred bucks and you're walking out happy, but I would rather walk out with a, with a box full of, of value value cards because I'm going to triple what, what you're going to get out of that one card. And yes, you right. may be able to flip that card out, you know, a hell of a lot quicker than, than I'm going to move my stuff, but I'm going to have fun at the same time because I'm still going to wind up with enough inventory. That's, that's mine. Well, and it's also like, if you think about it, you know, Blasters at $35 a piece right now. You're getting, what do they have, about 20 cards of Blaster? So you're going to get 60 random cards. And I would say out of those 60, 50 to 55 of them, you're likely not going to care about. You know, in fact, mm-hmm. many folks might even throw them away because unless they're building the set or something, nobody wants commons of, you know, the the third stringer that's 12th man on the bench, right? They don't care. Yep. Um, most so, of the rookies. Saw, saw a ton of that at the national. I said, I saw a ton of that at the national people cracking, yeah. you know, boxes and then just leaving them all over tables for people just to take. Right. Right. And you know, a lot, most of your rookies, 95% likely won't pan out to be a star at all. Um, so you could take that same hundred dollars and go find a decent box of cards at a show. Now I'm not saying go like look at a 10 cent box, but go find a dealer that might have, you know, random value boxes, 50 cents, a dollar card, something like that. And yeah. just ask them. There's hey. there's really not many that do that do dime boxes anymore though. There's not very right. many that do it, Don. Right. You have to you have to negotiate it down to that point. Most most people are at a dollar right now, and I mean yeah. you will find fifty cent boxes, but but that's far and few between. You just you know you've got to work your way down to that number. But the way you work your way down to that number is buying extensive volume, and you just got to well, be willing to pay up, you know, and and show them that you're going to buy that kind of volume. And that that was my point, though. Go to a dealer. That might have a 50 cent box or a dollar box or what have you. And, you know, obviously if they got cards in there, they're priced five, 10, 20, $50. Don't even bother. But if it's strictly a dollar box or a 50 cent box, ask them, how much would you take for the whole box? And see if you can get it in that hundred dollar range. You might be surprised if you're willing to buy the whole box and give them a hundred dollar, a crisp hundred dollar bill. They might take it. And instead of buying those three blasters where you're likely going to be lucky to get $100 back out of it, you then have an entire box of cards that might have a gem, a diamond in the rough in there that was forgotten about because who knows how long that 50 cent or dollar box has been built, right? Sometimes they do them right before shows, but many times those boxes have been built for months, you know, you could have, I don't know, you could have some judge rookies in there. Let's face it. A, a year ago, judge rookies weren't very much, right? Um, you could nope. find judge rookies in some of these boxes. And people I was build still those boxes up. Ways. 
Shohei rookies, right? Shohei, Judge, Harper's, you know, I just mentioned him. He's heating up. I don't care for the guy, but let's face it. If he gets the Phillies to the World Series or they potentially win, Harper's stuff's going to – he's got four home runs in the playoffs. I'm sure his stuff is going to likely get a little bump here. Um, you might find some Harper rookies in there. Um, you know, you got the basketball season coming up. Who knows what what player could come, you know, do something in basketball this year. Um, so mm -hmm. rather, you know, and, and just have fun with it. Now, you could bust out. You might spend that 100 bucks and only get $50 value back. But – the same thing would happen likely with the blasters. So um, I, I bet you you're going to get $500 worth of entertainment value out of it, you know, well, yeah, regardless. Yeah. You, you, you understand what I'm saying though. The, the yeah, chances absolutely. are just as high to find something good in a random value box than it is some blasters. And right now I'm not trying to, you know, discourage anyone from going out there buying wax because it's fun to open packs. But for anyone, if you're new, and I don't know, like, the the full spectrum of our listeners, but if you're new, a lot of the products today, the value that you're going to get back isn't going to condone what you're spending. That's most wax products. Even before the, the price increases, even before the boom, it was very risky, but you had a better chance today all these new parallels, all this new, that's just a clear sign that they're printing more of it because then they need to put more parallels in there. So back when base rookies were cool to get, it's not no more. And that kills the majority of all of your value from these products. Let's face it, retail, mm -hmm. you're not getting numbered parallels, but few and very, very, very far between. Most that you're getting is base rookie cards. And the value of those has just been, you know, uh, watered down because of the, yep. the parallel market. Yep. Flat. Yeah, yeah. And I, trust me, I love a good base card. I'm not, I'm not crapping on them. I'm just trying to tell folks out there that, you know, these products, the value that used to be in them came from the base cards. today. It's hard to get that out of it. So, but anyway, yeah, I'm, right I'm going to go right now I have... have fun no matter what. Um, I, uh, between me, you, and the ears of the crowd, I'm going to hopefully try to wiggle my way into to see Ovechkin. There, Chantilly's got such a powerhouse autograph signing list, um, but some of them are just so expensive, but... If I can work the magic that I was told possibly could be in the works, I may try to wiggle my way back to get old, good old Ovechkin. I have a couple Russian ice cards from when he played over there that uh, mm -hmm. SGC apparently no longer grades. So I figured I spent a good bit of money on those. Maybe if I could potentially have the opportunity to get some ink slapped on them, um, could do that. That'd be pretty cool. And then at least I would have some value back out of them for my collection because I don't really know what I'm going to do with them now. <laughs> they don't, they're <laughs> weird sized cards too. So I can't even put them in a one touch. That's the sad part. <laughs> but um, anyway, I hope folks enjoy this. Uh, if you're hitting a show up, seriously, I know it's fun to look at all the cool big cards, the shiny cards, the vintage cards, all that in display cases. That is extremely fun. But if you're discouraged on prices in those display cases, start hunting them them white boxes because I bet you can find some some pretty sweet nuggets in there. It's going to take yeah. you a little bit longer, but uh, I think you can find some really cool stuff in there. I'm, uh, yeah, most you're, you're all of gonna... the inserts have been yeah, You're always going to win. Boxes. You're going to win. I guarantee you you're going to win. Play in right. those, those value boxes. Right. So um, hopefully this motivates some folks. If you're listening out there, if you are hitting a show up and if you take any way, anything away from what we discussed tonight and you do go diving in those white value boxes, comment down below, even if it's a month from now. Remember this episode. Pull me all the refractors. Yeah. 
hey now. I, I'm telling you, <laughs> Told me all the you're going to be sad because if I see more Griffey refractors, you know where they're going. Um, yeah, it's okay. But anyway, and I'm bonds, okay I got to gotta, gotta, gotta need to hunt more bonds too. He's another one I'd really need to hunt for. But um, anyway, mm -hmm. I hope everybody enjoys it. Comment below. Let us know if you hit a show up, if you find some value. Let us know how you find value. What do you do at a show? Maybe you got another little game plan that you have in your back pocket that we haven't even thought of that works for you. Um, but we hope you have a wonderful Wednesday. And as always, thank you. Thank you, everyone.